I did not come out to my parents until I was out of college. I was a full-time musician, you know, Christian boy doing music full-time. And I had been working with some gay positive groups that were also, also had a Christian component. So they were accepting of gays and lesbians, but also understanding that we could come from a religious background and they were accepting of all that. And I was learning that, you know, probably in the future, I was going to have to come out to my parents. So I was beginning to drop hints, not about me, but, you know, I was home with my parents. They lived in Sacramento. I was in San Francisco. I was in San Francisco. And, (laughs) and, uh, I can remember at times I would be like, oh, yeah, my roommate, you know, who happens to be gay, blah, 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 right? And just to kind of drop the hint here and there, my parents are too nosy and smart to know, you know, those clues are coming through. I had actually gone home to do a concert at the church I grew up in. It was the Friday before the Sunday concert. And I mean, I had friends coming in are going to sing with me, my music, things like that. It was going to be a big deal. And I sit down to a Friday night dinner with my parents and my mom very innocently. So Jeffrey, that's my uh, birth name. Jeffrey, um, why do you know so much about gays and lesbians? And, you know, I tried to blow it off. I tried to, you know, because I wasn't ready to come out. But they're, again, too damn nosy, you know, parents, helicopter parents. Oh, my God. And within a few minutes, I can remember my mom going, so what what are you saying? Are you telling us? And I wasn't going to lie anymore. And it just de-evolved into one of our nightmare arguments hours of wailing and gnashing of teeth and I should have just put it into it right away but I was feeling bad and they were crying and I was crying and there was no I was trying to educate there was no educating you know possible because it was too much of a shock and it was so out of their reality they didn't even knowingly they barely knew anybody um who was gay and the One or two that they did was not, you know. But at some point in the evening, I clearly remember mom saying, this is worse than your sister dying. And, um, you know, (laughs) uh, and uh, she has since then apologized profusely for it. We've come a long way. But um, at that point, even when she said that, despite how deeply it hurt, it almost felt like uh, uh, somehow my, you know, survival mechanism kicked in and I went, I can't be here anymore. And so I had a couple of, uh, a couple of gay friends, these beautiful, burly, beautiful men uh, who live not too far. And I called them like at 11 at night. And I said, I have come out to my parents. I cannot stay here. I'm coming over right now. And, um, you know, I went over there and, uh, you know, I, I entered in their house and, you know, they gave me hugs and everything. And I said, I'll just, you know, I'll just sleep on the couch. And they said, oh, no, no, you're not. You're going to come with us. And those two guys put me between them and cuddled with them all night and um, couldn't have been more healing. But, uh, you know, the next day when I was talking to my dad He's like, well, I have to cancel the concert because I can't knowingly let a homosexual get up in front of our church. I said, no, no, Dad, you don't have to do it. I'll do it. Called the pastor. Wouldn't tell him why, but I said, I'm so sorry. There's no way around it. I cannot do the concert. Ugh, talk about, you know, nightmare scenario. Not a good way to come out. And they got a lot of counsel, a lot of bad counsel from their church. They came really close to doing the whole excommunication thing. But at the 11th hour, they got a hold of a ministry, a woman who also had her her son come out to him. And she actually made a ministry of supporting parents. And I knew that ministry. But if I had told my parents, hey, call this woman, they never would have done it because I was, you know the pariah at the moment, but somewhere in the 11th hour, they got a hold of this woman. I was back in San Francisco and I pick up the phone and it's this woman from this ministry. And I'm like, Oh, and immediately I'm like, 
oh, shit, it happened. It happened. My parents got to the right person. And she was on the phone. She goes, I have your parents here. And I'm like, yes. And, um, you know, my parents made it clear that they loved me and they didn't understand, but they weren't going to kick me out or if that's not what they wanted to do. Years of lots of arguing and me learning to draw new boundaries as an adult. And they would want me to come to Christmas at their house, which we always did, but they wouldn't invite my uh, partner. And I, I would, you know, I would... Sometimes I would feel so bad. Oh, you know, I made it so uncomfortable for my parents. Bullshit. Over time, I'm like, well, mom, if you can't accept my partner, then I'm not coming either. Oh, you know, and they just wail. And But it was, it was a really growing up process for me. They have come a long way. Dad's no longer with us. My mom and the rest of my family are still very evangelical, but they've also learned to love their gay uncle as best they can. It's a far cry from what it should be. But I also recognize that they are human. They are doing the best they can. I don't need their affirmation to live a fulfilled and happy life. I should have it because they're my blood-related family. But those are not the circumstances I have found myself in. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna poo-poo all, you know, whine all about it or anything like that. I have a life to live. And if they can't, if they can't join in that joy, then I have very little energy for them. I'll always be there for my mom because she was there for me the first 20 years of my life and got me on my feet and all that kind of stuff. And I know that for some people, if a family like that can't really embrace them, they just kind of cut them off and say, bye-bye. And I totally get that. And there's times I would like to do that, but I also know that's not in me. And I don't feel like for me that that's the kind of love I want to exhibit. Unconditional love is a standard nobody measures up to, but we can do our best. And I see them doing their best most of the time, and I do my best as well. I don't feel like it. I need to cut them out, because um, that's what they would do, and that's it's just not. It's just not me. So that's my parents. There you go. That story. <laughs>